The Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro series delivers speeds up to 4600 MHz using carefully screened ICs for optimal overclocking, while 10 super bright RGB LEDs per module unlock limitless possibilities that can sync across all your IQ compatible products. To learn more, click the link below. So the other day I tweeted out a picture of my cousin's gaming PC, and I told you guys to rate it 1 through 10, mainly because I wanted to see the horrified look on his face after reading all your comments. And sure enough, you guys delivered on that end like you always do. Uh, but the, the feedback was actually quite polarizing. Half of you commended Andrew for his part selection. After all, we have a fairly high-end system here with a 7700K and a GTX 1070 Founders Edition. But the other half of you savagely tore him a new one when it came to aesthetics, which I wholeheartedly understand as I have several cosmetic quarrels with this build in its current state, including ungodly dust buildup. <laughs> Nauseating ketchup and mustard cables. I'm seeing a lot of ketchup and mustard, not many wieners. An ugly CPU cooler. I'm sure it works fine, but it's ugly. Boring stock case fans. How can your fan be running when it's so lame? And a lack of RGB. No wonder it's running slow. Now, to be fair, this is only the second system Andrew's ever put together, so it could have been a lot worse. But as a close family member of mine, his shoddy building skills reflect poorly on my own. And honestly, Andrew, I'm quite offended that you would do this to your own cousin. I guess we'll just call it even for that one time I got you way too drunk at Ren Fair. So for my own self-preservation and interest, today I will be pimping out Andrew's PC. I do have a small handful of blingy parts I'll be adding to the system, but instead of showing all of them to you at once, I'm gonna introduce and install them one at a time just to switch things up. Uh, before I do any of that, however, there's one thing that I absolutely need to do to the system before we begin. And that is, of course, give it a good dusting. Do not shake. Ah, uh, well shit. So now that we're done dusting, we can start adding some new product to the build, such as this sleeved extension kit from up here. That's the name of the brand, I've never heard of them before. Leads me to believe they're a Chinese manufacturer, but they got really good positive feedback on Amazon, a lot of user reviews and stuff. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to using these because it was a fairly cheap alternative to the traditional cable mod and other big name brands that we're familiar with. So as you can see through the little cutout here, I am going green. Yes, in fact, this entire system is gonna be given a green theme, black and green, I suppose, a very tried true color scheme. The reason I'm going that route is because we already have green branding on our Founders Edition card that's a little tricky to change or modify and I don't really want to get into that for my cousin's PC. So we're gonna do black and green. I think it's gonna be super sexy in the end. Can't wait to see how it turns out. So let's get installing this kit and take the aesthetics of this build up a notch or two. If I can get it open. <laughs> The cable sleeving kit is now installed and things are already looking a whole lot better. It's amazing what a difference just that cable kit alone makes. But the next thing I want to do is actually swap out this eyesore of an air cooler for something with a little bit more flair. So here I have the Cryorig H7 Quad Loop. This is actually a pretty good performer for the price and you'll probably be able to hit some higher overclocks with it than the cooler that's already in there. Uh, additionally, it's got RGB lighting. It's, it's got like three different RGB zones, I believe, um, that are all supported by CAM, the NZXT CAM software. The last thing I'll say here is that this is a very attractive cooler even without the LEDs on. Uh, you got this sort of nice flat black faceplate with the Cryorig logo. The fan is stylized and modern without overdoing it. And overall, it's just a very handsome unit that I think is gonna look lovely inside of this system. So without further ado, Let's get it installed. Oh yeah, I I'm digging it so far. It's really coming along nicely. Uh, the next thing I want to do is swap out this stock case fan. It's a 140 millimeter fan, perfectly adequate for cooling and all that, 
but we're just gonna give it a little bit of RG bling as we do. So this is an AR RGB 140 kit with a Hue Plus, comes with two 140s. However, I'm only gonna be giving Andrew one of these fans because I'm using the other one in a different system. So you can't have it, Andrew. Uh, you only get one fan. Uh, but aside from that, you don't really need more than one 140 millimeter fan for exhaust in this system as it currently stands. You got three 120s at the front for, for intake already. And the graphics card has a closed shroud, which means all the hot air is being ejected out the back of the case. It's not actually interfering with CPU temps going through the heat sink or anything like that. So one 140 is gonna be perfectly adequate. Now this kit does not include any LED strips, but I do have some on hand, just in my inventory. I'm gonna be adding those to the mix as well. And finally, you guys probably noticed the expansion card that Andrew popped in here. There's actually four USB 3 at the back. Apparently he needed more USB 3, uh, but it's got this terrible SATA to Molex adapter that's ketchup and mustard through and through, and I, I don't like it one bit. So this is the last little thing we'll have to change about the system. I'm not exactly sure if I have uh, a similar cable that's all black, or if we have a spare SATA cable that's connected to the power supply as of now. We'll just have to see what we can do when we get there. But on that note, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. say eh? what am i canadian uh, anyone can do this i think that's maybe the moral of the story is uh, just with a few quick changes obviously i did spend a bit of coin but you can find ways to make it cheaper uh, you can turn your just very average looking system into something that looks a little bit more showy. I would also suggest that before you pimp out your PC cosmetically, to make sure that the hardware, the specs, are where you want them to be first. I would say upgrade performance first, and then once you're happy with that, then you can take a whack at aesthetics. But um, yeah, this is a lot of fun. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's all I have to say, really. Go ahead and toss a like on it if you enjoyed it. You can also get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Lots of exciting content on the way. And feel free to check me out on Floatplane if you wanna watch my videos a week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link for that in the video description. Till next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.